Shalom, shalom. Before I begin this lesson, of course, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. All right, also double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, love, many blessings to the elect of Israel scattered around the four corners of the earth who's given all diligence to make their calling of election sure. All right, it's the brother Atazawam coming back through the spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and Lord willing, I do hope and pray that this lesson is edifying. Okay, uh, tonight's lesson is going to be entitled... The health risks uh, from holding grudges, okay? Um, and it was prompted by the screenshot that I got up right here, which the brother Abu Ba just sent in the group the other day. And, um, you know, it, it really uh, put a lot in perspective, you know, pertaining to the law of grudging, okay? Now, we know that the law was established, um, you know, to, to benefit man, Okay? The upright ways of the scriptures was, was established by Yahweh Bashima Washai so that we may prosper, that we may have good health, um, that the earth may be in good care, in good shape, so on and so forth. And a part one part of the law is we, we're not supposed to grudge against each other. Okay, and you may think, how how is this going to affect your health? How well the Lord is the ultimate scientist. Okay? The Lord created um you know, everything under the sun, you know, from your emotions to, you know, food, animals, man, the spirit, everything was created by Yahweh by Shema Washai. And the Lord ultimately knows the things that are unhealthy for the body. OK, so you got these scientists. OK, which I do got the article to support this screenshot, which uh, Lord willing, I'll put it in the description box. But scientists did an actual study on how grudging uh, affects the uh the, the health it deteriorates the health of the human body because it increases um your blood pressure um you, it affects your immune system and it, it causes your heart rate to fluctuate okay just by holding grudges when you you know us men in this truth you know we we've been established in Yahweh by Shema Washai to be merciful men okay to whom mercy is allotted to of course okay so therefore, grudging is not a beneficial thing to us. And the truth is actually can be a, um, a health risk. OK, because you release certain chemicals that causes depression, causes stress. You know, it puts so much strain on your brain to even think about, you know, um, how much you hate people. And that's why this world is in such a grave condition right now. Because everybody is all immersed in cancel culture and cutting people off and, you know, just no new friends. It's just a very negative vibration concerning the interaction with, with human life. Okay. And it causes people to be bitter, to be emotional, to be angry. Um, all of the things in which we trying to stay away from. So grudging is, 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 is very important to uh, make sure, you know, we, we relinquishing that demon. We don't want to harbor that demon of, of, of grudging. All right. So let's get some scriptures. This is um, James 5 and 9. It says, grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. So that's in the book of James, not to grudge against another. Okay? You're not supposed to want no ill will to happen to a brother. You're not supposed to be putting curses on brothers because a brother rubbed you the wrong way or might have said something that, you know, rubbed you the wrong way. And he might not have even meant it in that, in that intention, you know? So we're not supposed to hold on to that. Um, and, 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 and use that as a catalyst to, you know, treat this brother like he's not a man of the Lord. Okay. There is certain things that's going to happen in the, in, in the truth. Offenses must come. Okay. Now, if a brother offends you purposefully and un unrighteously, then yeah, you have the right to, uh, confront that brother pursuant to the book of Matthew, the 18th chapter. Okay, but then there's certain times where, it, hey, man, you can't be petty in this truth, man. We ain't women. Okay, it says, behold, the judge standeth at the door. Okay, take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, <clears throat> affliction, and of patience. Okay, so being, being in this truth, you have to be one of patience. You have to be one that is willing to suffer for this word. And the part of the sufferings is you're going to have certain things that's going to come from brothers that, that you may not like, and you may have to suffer that affliction, all right? The scriptures speak about suffering uh, wrongfully. Matter of fact, the scriptures tell you also, 
Let me see. Yeah, Ecclesiastes uh, 10 and um, what was it? I think it was six. Yeah, 10 and six. Bear not hatred to thy neighbor for every wrong and do nothing at all by injurious practices. OK, so every every wrong that a brother does, you're not supposed to 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 hold that hatred on him. All right spying and waiting for him to to slip and go off okay so that you can dangle his shortcomings over him okay that's a that's a form of grudging okay we supposed to hey the scriptures say uh rebuke and threaten not let me get that rebuke thy neighbor yep uh, this is uh, Ecclesiastes 19 and 17. Admonish thy neighbor before thou threaten him and not being angry, give place to the law of the most high. So we're supposed to be in the spirit of admonishing, correcting, reproving, exhorting, warning. OK, if we do see a brother slip, not. Oh, yeah. See, there you go. I knew it. No, that's not the way to do it. OK, we're supposed to be men of mercy. We're supposed to be our brother's keepers in this truth. We believe in the saving of the souls and a part of believing in the saving of the souls is actually being a merciful man when mercy needs to be extended. OK. Because there are certain times where, you know, you, you got to, you know, be strict, you know, with Jake, you know, and you got to got to have a zero tolerance when it comes down to certain things, certain transgressions. You got to have a zero tolerance. OK. There are certain cases you know, where you have to exercise mercy. You have to understand that a brother is being taken in a fault. It tells you that in the book of Galatians, the sixth chapter, which Lord willing will get. But this is uh, Ecclesiastes 19. I'm going to jump up to 13, actually. It says, admonish a friend. It may be he have not done it. And if he have done it, that he do it no more. OK, so sometimes things get lost in translation. Sometimes misunderstandings happen. You know, personality clashes, upbringings. Um, you know, tribal things, you know, way, way of life, you know, just happens. You know, everybody is not cookie cutter. Everybody doesn't do things the same way. So certain things that may rub uh, you wrong, you know, a brother may do unintentionally. Um, that's why the scripture speak about admonish thy friend. It may be that he have not said it. OK. And it says, and if he have that, he speak it, speak it not again. Admonish your friend for many times. It is a slander and believe not every tale. There is one that slippeth in his speech, but not from his heart. And who is he that have not offended with his tongue? We've all offended with the tongue one way or another, which is why we pray for repentance. And you make it right with your brother. OK, if you know that there is some type of friction or some form of, um, you know, a, a, a hedge between you and a, and a brother, you know, fix it. Make it right. You have the scriptures, you know, and, and a lot of times. Um, things don't get ironed out or hashed out because somebody's not taking accountability. OK, if we take accountability for our wrongdoings. You know, it, things can easily be squashed. OK, verse 17, once again, admonish thy neighbor before thou threaten him. So you don't just want to threaten the brother on what you're going to do to him and what's going to happen to him. And you haven't even talked to him. You haven't even admonished him. You grudging. OK, and that's just relinquishing. You know, so much stress and, and, you know, within yourself and you angry and, you know, becoming bitter and hasty in your judgment. You know, you just, you know, just just like a Scrooge. You know, you don't you know, you don't want to be like an Ebenezer Scrooge threatening brothers and saying what you're going to do. And no, nah, man, that's that's not the way. OK. It says, and not being angry, because remember the scripture say anger resteth in the bosom of fools. So we have to be men of patience. We have to be men of mercy and we have to be men of judgment. OK, understanding judgment, understanding the writings of the scriptures. OK, it says, um, give place to the law of the most high because we want to allow the law to work. OK, the law is righteous. The law is good, which is why grudging. Is is it, we we not what? Let's just get it. All right, in the book of Leviticus, so I can make sure I'm quoting it right. All right, Leviticus chapter nineteen, verse seventeen. 
Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So let's say you have, you know, a brother in the camp and you y'all may not see eye to eye on a lot of points and perspectives or you might not like certain ways about him or how he whatever. OK, um, you're not supposed to hate that brother in your heart. And if he offends with the tongue, you rebuke him, you check him and righteousness, let him know. OK. But you're not supposed to allow a, a man to suffer sin upon him. If you see a man falling and slipping, our responsibility is to restore a man, not to grudge and, you know, wait for his fall. We supposed to be, hey, hey, hey brother, you got to do this, brother. You got to, you got to be on more on point, man. You got to be more on fire. You got to, what's up with you in camp? What's up with you in, in the test? What's up with you being in class, brother? What's, what's going on with you? You got to be like that. Okay, that's a part of the law. You ain't supposed to suffer sin upon a brother, man. You see a brother going off and you don't say nothing, you just as guilty. You know? Verse 18, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So we're supposed to love brethren, man. As you love yourself, you love your brethren because we, we are one. We're one body. Like you would love your children. You would love your, your woman if she's of your spirit. If you're one spirit, you love you love them. You know, you just like you love the Akia, man. We out there laboring and battling on the highways and byways week in and week out and enduring and going through sufferings and mental hurdles. All kind of things is coming our way. And um, we don't we, we don't want to hate each other and hit the self-destruct button. That's not of the law. OK, we're supposed to love our neighbor, man. We're supposed to treat our neighbor with love and respect, okay? Upholding the righteous law of the Lord, okay? Because we, we, it's times, man, where sometimes we might slip, you know, and, and, and fall. And sometimes that neighbor, hey, we, we need the brother to pick us up. In Galatians 6 and, 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 and 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou be also be tempted. So you, I remember we face temptations, man. We, we go through hell, you know. There's certain times where the temptation is harder on a brother than the next. And we have to, you know, restore through the spirit of meekness, not blasting and, and threatening and saying what you're going to do and all this and that. Okay? You correct the brother. You, you, and then if a brother don't get it, then you got to, hey, bro, if you don't get right, man, the spirit of the Lord, you know. That's the spirit, not to be in the spirit of grudging, you know, holding spirits in. And like I said, it, it, it can throw off your, 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 your health. You, you ever notice about black women that grudge and they gossip on the phone all day and talk about what happened between them and another woman five years ago and they ain't never got over their baby daddy. They just is bitter and they got all kind of health problems, diabetes, black eye, their eye, they eyelids are black. OK. Skin uh, wrinkling up. You know, just a full blown unhealthy specimen. OK, because they harboring all them nasty demons. You got to let them spirits go. OK. Them spirits try to overtake you. So, Lord willing, that was an edifying lesson. I'm going to go ahead and close it out, giving all praise, glory and honor to you. How about you? How about you? How about you? Double honors once more to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and peace, love, many blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom.